I'm Brian. I'm the uh, maintainer for the ID editor. So this is the default editor that, that you can use on OpenStreetMap.org that lets you edit the map right from within your web browser. So um, every good talk needs an ask, so I'm just going to lead out with it. We are an open source project on GitHub. Um, so please check us out. There's lots of opportunities for new contributors to jump in and help fix bugs, add presets. There's a lot of things that don't even require a lot of code knowledge. So yes, this is my cry for help, please. We even tag some issues with good first issue for, for new contributors. Um, and we've actually got a special thing going on right now in the month of October called Hacktoberfest. So this is especially great for people who are brand new to open source. Um, you can sign up on hacktoberfest.digitalocean.com or Google it. Um, send five pull requests throughout the month of October and you'll get a shirt and some stickers and stuff. So ID and a whole bunch of the other OSM projects are participating in this, so definitely get involved. All right, where are we today? ID is currently at version 2.11, so we just released a new version in August. I try to release a new minor version like once a month or so. Sometimes we go a few months without a release if we're working on something bigger. So in this talk, I will highlight some of our accomplishments that we've made in the past year. We'll go all the way back to November of last year. Um, this was shortly after State of the Map US and Boulder. We released version 2.5, which added support for OpenStreetCam. So thank you to Martine and his team from Telenav for helping land this. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Moving on to January of this year, version 2.6. Um, this release includes some brand new tricks to let mappers enhance the background imagery. So you can crank up the brightness or the contrast, you can adjust the saturation, and even sharpen the imagery a little bit. This one is both useful and kind of fun to play with. Um, also in version 2.6, we upgraded a bunch of the presets for public transportation, public transport V2. Check out these icons on the side. You can see that we do our best to let the mappers add all of those like stop locations and platforms and things like that. Then in March, with version 2.7, we released a big update to the turn restrictions editor. Uh, now it supports adding viaway restrictions and only restrictions. So it'll also highlight the paths through the intersection so that you can really understand the effects of whatever it is that you're doing. Viaways are important for mapping things like a no U-turn that goes across a dual carriageway, like when there's two roads. Um, and this example shows me adding some only straight on restrictions to simplify this channelized intersection so the cars can only go like certain ways through there. Then in April with version 2.8, we changed the screen that we show to users after they save their edits. Um, we have a new community index project and we use this to display local OSM meetups, user groups, and events like State of the Map US. We deliberately use language on this screen to target it at newer mappers so to let them know that there's people who care about the map around where they're editing. In June with version 2.9, we added support for Bing Street Side. This brings in 360 degree panoramic imagery across, across large portions of the US, UK, France, and Spain. So thanks to Jubal Harpster and his team from Microsoft for making this possible. <laughs> um, then in July, um, with version 2.10, we released support for OSM Notes. Um, this work was done by one of our Google Summer of Code students, Thomas Hervey, who's actually gonna speak right after me, um, and mentor Mark Farah, who's back there. Um, from Development Seed. Thomas is here to tell you more about the project in a few minutes. Here we're looking at some notes around Manhattan. Um, obviously we have a lot of work to do to close these, but mappers can comment on, close, reopen, and even add new notes right from within ID. We also snuck in a, a couple other cool features to version 2.10. One of our contributors, Sigio, added a command to let you detach a node from away and move it someplace else. So it really kind of like feels like magic to just grab this bollard and hit the E key and have it pull right to your cursor. Also, shout out to Mateus from Mapillary who made it possible to resize the viewer window. This is cool. It works for any of the photo layers, Mapillary, OpenStreetCam, and Bing Street Side. Finally, uh, in August with version 2.11, we added support for data stored in vector tiles. This was work done by our other Google Summer of Code student, Princey Virtual, along with her mentor, um, Sajad Anwar from Development Seed. So before, if you wanted to work with external data in ID, you could only load like a single GPX, a KML, or a GeoJSON file. And vector tiles now let you work with much richer data sets. This example here shows us switching between a few sample vector tile layers that were built by Jonah Atkins. Uh, if you use ID around the Detroit area, you can actually see these um, on the map data pane off to the right. Uh, we can show you public data sets of neighborhoods, parks, business registrations, just anything really. And you can hover over and inspect the data fields too. Um, so you can imagine using like a feature extraction tool like RoboSat to detect all the building footprints or the parking lots or the roads or something like that and then have that data brought right into the ID editor to work with directly. So we're excited about the kinds of machine-assisted editing tools that we'll be able to build on top of this. All right, that is all the time I have. We're at five minutes, so thank you very much. Again, check us out and follow our star, our project on GitHub.